The best way to learn something new is to build on the things that you already know. That way it's a lot easier to get into your playing, and more likely that you actually get something out of your practice time. That's how this exercise works, and it's a great way to learn some new, very useful and flexible jazz chords that you can do really amazing things with. And you can take it pretty far, ending up with some great sounding voicings that are maybe also just a little bit tricky to play. Let's start with these basic voicings for a 251 and then work out how to create a lot more chords and more importantly, chords that you can work with, adding color and embellishments. If we turn them into rootless voicings by removing the bass note, then you get. Notice that the D minor seven is in fact the F major triad, it's an F major triad in the second inversion. And that means that you can play D minor seven on the same string set in three different ways by using the inversions of the F major triad. Now, if you look at the 251, then you can see that when you're moving from D minor seven to G seven, then really all that's happening is that the C is moving to the B. So you can create two fives for all those D minor seven voicings but just finding the C and then moving that down to a B. And here I'm moving up the last one an octave because then we don't have any open strings and you get something that's easier to move around to other keys. And already here, you might come across a G7 chord voicing that you don't use that often. And we're only just getting started. Let's make this a complete 251 by adding the E minor triads that are used for the C major seven voice. exercises and maybe even practice, then it's about drilling scales and arpeggios with a metronome. Now, of course, you need to do stuff like that as well, but it's also very useful to sometimes have some exercises that help you discover new things. Here, you're starting with chords that you already know and play, and then you're developing a lot more options from that. And you can do that with any voicing or chord progression. And as you'll see, then we can add a lot of beautiful colors to these chords. And this is not really about repeating material hundreds of times. It's much more about sitting down and discovering things that sound great and then try to use that. The first thing you can do is to make the G7 a G7 flat nine. So it has a little bit more tension and adds more energy to the chord progression. So if we take the G7 voicing, so we just need to find the A, the ninth, and then lower that a half step. And then you have a two five one like this. And then you can take that through the inversions as well. Notice that I'm also adding a variation to the C major seven chords because I'm moving the fifth up to the 13th. So G up to A. You could of course try to do the same, but then move it down to a sharp 11 instead. That would be this. But I'll let you explore that for yourself. For me, it's very important to think of chords as things that you can change, not static grips, so that you have some freedom to create the sound that you want from some basic chord symbols. A very common thing to play on a tonic chord like the C major seven is to move the major seventh down to the major six in half steps. That would be something like this. When I'm playing this, then that's not that difficult to do with these three note voicings. But if we're playing with the root in there, then that's a very different story. So playing the three note chords adds quite a bit of flexibility and will give you a lot of options for what you can do when you're playing the chords, which as you will see is where all the fun stuff really starts to come up. When I was in the first few years of my study at the conservatory, then most of the gigs that I did were these long three to four hour standard gigs comping singers. Now, depending on the singer, then everything from a third to half of the songs were ballads. And that can be a bit boring, but it's also just the perfect place to develop voicings and voice leading like this. And this is also how I helped keep it interesting, not only for me, but also just to keep the rhythm section awake 
while the soloist was still happy, so we didn't get fired. Let's try to take this a bit further so that you can see all the things that are possible, just starting with these three basic jazz chords. You have a seventh moving down to the sixth, and you can of course also work with the eleventh on the minor chord. Try to pay attention to how the sound changes when the movement is in different parts of the chord. What is happening here is often referred to as inner voice movement, and it's a beautiful way to embellish chords and add some interesting twists and turns to keep the harmony flowing in a nice way. You also want to notice that I don't really rely on a static fingering for the chords, so I'll play it differently depending on what voices need to move and what I want to do with them. And I think that's something that's really useful to keep in mind because you don't want to get stuck with just being able to play something in one way when another way is more practical. You can of course also take these ideas and start with another inversion, like this one. When it comes to soloing, then triads are also an amazing resource, and you can work out a lot of great sounding lines that are based on triads, as you can see in this video that applies this process to a jazz blues. 